Horseshoe crabs have been swimming the oceans for 300 million years, even before dinosaurs evolved. More closely related to spiders than to true crabs, they aren't fished for food in the West. But fishermen do use the crabs for bait, and so their numbers have declined steeply in recent years, especially because of conch fishing. Do they eat horseshoe crabs? Oh yeah, that's a fair, that's almost their favorite. Bait of choice. And that has galvanized a single-minded defender of the horseshoe crab, Glenn Gauvry, a former industrial designer and the force behind Delaware's Ecological Research and Development Group. His group publicizes its Just Flip 'em campaign so that people walking the beach will turn over spawning crabs stranded from the night before. And if you just flip them over, they go back into the water. And if you don't, then they get predated upon by the gulls and they die. A lot of them are females still carrying full load of eggs. Like, I don't know if this one's alive here, but we can... Yeah, see? This is a female. You can tell by the front two pincers that are not like boxing gloves. And you can also see by how she's moving that she's perfectly healthy. But she was stranded, so she was going to sit there and slowly bake in the sun and die today. And there's nothing wrong with her. So, simple matter of just turning her upside down, she's going to go into the water on her own. Now there's two that came in early and they're spawning right now. That's the female and that's the male. Every spring, female horseshoe crabs swim to shore to lay their eggs, which are then fertilized by male crabs who ride on the back of the female's shells. This is a perfect day for spawning because it's, it's very low energy surf. The likelihood of getting flipped over is very minimal. They can come up on the beach and do their thing. But there, there are nights when, you know, the waves are crashing and these two will be rolling around on the beach and he won't let go. Glenn Gauvery has found an unusual ally in his campaign to protect the horseshoe crab. Punk fisherman Frank Eicherly, or Thumper, as he's known by everyone in Bowers Beach, Delaware. Yeah, believe it or not, trying to uh, conserve them as far as bait. Try to stretch them out, get as much bait as we can get out of one. And uh, this one's a female. You can tell by the pinchers up here in the front. Frank owns the oldest fishing boat in the United States, the 108-year-old Maggie Myers. He has no alternative to using horseshoe crabs as bait for conch. But he's also a conservationist who's developed a way to use 80% fewer of the crabs. So you freeze them to death? Yeah. Here's the guillotine. Yeah, he's in suspended animation right now. He's dead. He's dead, yeah, he's frozen. Uh, right, he's right brittle. First thing you do, watch your eyes. Get rid of that tail there. So all these little pieces and stuff we can use in the bait bag. In the past, Frank says, his boat would list to one side when he went out in the mornings. It was so heavily loaded with crabs. So his new method saves him fuel and bait. But that isn't his main motivation. I know in my heart that without the horseshoe crabs, the Delaware Bay wouldn't be the same. And this is the epicenter of the horseshoe crab. And uh, this bay is blessed from having so many. Despite their stinky reputation, dead crabs smell very strong, necessitating regular beach cleanups. The animal's unique copper-based blood is used to test the purity of every injectable medical drug. Unlike any other substance, the crab's blue blood reacts almost instantly to bacterial contamination. So each year, about 250,000 crabs donate one-third of their blood in biotechnology laboratories, like this one along the Atlantic coast, and are then returned to the ocean unharmed. Glenn Gauvery's Delaware group is now raising money for what will be the second museum in the world devoted to horseshoe crabs. The first is in Japan, where horseshoe crabs known as kabutogani, or helmet crabs, are celebrated in art and legend. There's all these wonderful s tales of uh, the samurai fighting the good battle, you know, on some sort of a maritime area and, and, and dies and then turns into a horseshoe crab, you know, and 
roams the sea, you know, immortal or something along those lines. Um, we don't really have any good European stories about horseshoe crabs. Uh, most of the stories that you hear about that comes from the Europeans have to do with how we dislike them. I don't expect people to appreciate horseshoe crabs the way I do, but uh, if you start to look a little bit deeper than, than the beautiful creatures that capture your heart instantly, um, I, I think you'll find an appreciation for these animals, and that's what they're going to need. They have survived 350 million years by their, by their strategy for survival, and the only thing right now that's putting that in jeopardy is us. Hey, sweetie, you're a big girl. Whoa, and you're loaded with eggs. She weighs a ton. Carolyn Weaver, VOA TV.